deep in the parched desert sands of ancient Osirian. Long forgotten secrets are becoming unearthed that could threaten the security of the entire region. Through cursed tombs, undead crypts, and towering pyramids, our unlikely band of heroes must rise to the challenge and find the secrets of the mummy's mask. Last time on the Mithril Tabletop. You know what? Screw <laughs> Spell Strike. It has failed me. <laughs> uh, she says, wait your turn, Tariq. I rolled 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay, I'm still up. What? I told you to leave. 10 points of damage, nice. and they both just <laughs> explode. I told you to buzz <laughs> off. And then she's going to come down with her axe again. Uh, oh, no. It has one hit point. Bye. Hello, listeners. This is Aaron, the voice of Tariq. It is another great week to have you join us, so thank you so much for tuning in. We typically use these introductions as a way to talk about ourselves or about our characters. Well, today I'm actually sharing something that I have in common with my character, and that is the fact that we both are note takers. I've struggled in times past with my memory. I don't know if it's the fact that I have undiagnosed ADHD, maybe it's because I'm getting older, or maybe it could be even extra, extra long-term mental fog from COVID. Whatever the case is, I know that I would be losing details from week to week in these games that I've played. And I knew probably, I think it was after episode three of doing this podcast, that if I didn't start taking notes, that it, I was just going to continue to struggle. And let me tell you, I have enjoyed playing the game so much more when I've been able to sit down and kind of look over my notes before the game and remember those details I would have forgotten otherwise. So I definitely, definitely recommend being a note taker for your group if your group doesn't already have one, or even if your group does have one, it doesn't hurt to have two note takers. And when you start out, if you feel a little anxious like I did trying to hurry up and write your notes, just make it canon for your character to be a note taker too. So that way when you're taking your time to write notes, so is your character and there's no rush. Totally didn't happen with Tariq. So go ahead and get your pens and paper ready for episode 18, The Sickening. So Ashley, I have a question for you. Yes, it's a very important question. What was it about Hamilton that made you say, nah, not for me? Because it's, in my no. personal opinion, one of the best musicals ever. Your thoughts? It, it was never a, oh, not for me thing because I loved the soundtrack. I would listen to it with my sisters and brother all the time. I just knew, especially when I was in grad school, I was like, oh, I know I'm going to watch this and I'm going to keep watching it because I'm going to like it. And then I would be like, no, I need to be able to pay attention to it. It's really long. My attention span is not the longest <laughs> it's not year. not that long. It's like two hours and my attention span it struggles. It is very okay? long. Do you watch movies? I, you know very well that I struggle with that, too. <laughs> Ashley, let me ask you this. Yes. Do you like Disney movies that have Ooh. musical numbers, such as <laughs> The Little Mermaid? Of course. The Lion King. That's Imagine. basically a musical. Oh, I know, it but I still musical. sit there and I, like, watch them, but I start getting distracted doing this, this, and I knew for Hamilton I had to pay attention because they sing the whole thing. And they I'm one great. of those people who really like subtitles. I always miss stuff if I don't have <laughs> subtitles on. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially in songs. Like, okay, here's a good example. All right. We were watching Monsters, Inc. And I have always heard this <laughs> quote incorrectly. Oh, no. Forever. <laughs> yep. Until yesterday when Andrew pointed out to me, that's not it. So it's like when they're doing the, um, the students are learning, they're doing that little demo, the simulation. And they go, we should never leave a door open because, and the guy says, it could let in a draft. I thought he was saying this entire time, it could let in a giraffe. <laughs> this entire time, I thought it was giraffe. And so I told Andrew, I was like, he's this, like, earlier today, I was like, he's not technically wrong. I mean, the chances are low, but they could let in a giraffe. And Andrew's like, what? And I was like, yeah, a giraffe. And he's like, no, actually, draft. I was like, oh, my gosh. I've heard this wrong my entire life. That's all good. 
<laughs> songs. I do that with songs all the time. Yeah. I'll sing one way and then like I look at the lyrics and I'm like, that is not what I exactly. heard. It's the Mandela effect kind of sort of. Kind of. Right? Does this count as a Mandela effect? I don't know, but... I think it's the Mirage effect. <laughs> the Mirage effect. <laughs> but I can definitely say that I have to have subtitles on for songs and, like, musicals and stuff, and I'm going to want to sing to it. So I was that whole time I was like, nope, I'm not going to watch it yet. I'm not going to watch it yet. I'm not going to watch it yet. Well, finally I watched it because, you know, it was time. I made time. you. Yeah, Andrew made me, but I it was also you. time to finally watch it because I would sing the songs. <laughs> well, I can rest easy tonight knowing the fact that now everyone in our party Everyone, every single one of us loves mu- musicals. Isn't that right, Angela? <laughs> <laughs> That's a bullshit. Oh my God. Musicals I do not love are them. so good. Everyone loves the musical. I, I love them. <laughs> I do too. I hate musicals. I'm such a musical with person. With a burning, fiery passion because they just annoy me. <laughs> Have you me. seen Hairspray? <laughs> no, I hate don't. It. No, no, not Hairspray. Hate not it. Hairspray hate in particular. What is it about musicals it. that you don't like? Like, I know you said they're annoying, um, the, but why are they annoying? <laughs> the musical part. <laughs> it, it, it is iffy to get her to watch some of the uh, Disney movies, too. Like, I think I think that's why you were hesitant on watching Encanto. You don't even like Disney yeah. musicals? Uh, I watched Encanto the other like, day. Like, the only, the only reason I watched Encanto is because you put it on and I was too polite <laughs> to say I didn't want to watch it. <laughs> But hey, we enjoyed now, it though. Now it's a comp- yeah. I was about I mean, to was- say you cannot love that that movie. That the, all every song slaps. Just straight up home run. I cry so hard every time so, I see that movie. So here's the thing. I think this is why I hate musicals. Like you can tell a story in a really nice way and have the music as a background. I just hate when the music is the story. Like so, like it. it I don't know. Les Mis. You probably hate Les Mis. I've never watched it. They sing so, the words. Like, when they're yes. having dialogue and they're just, like, talking, they're singing. Yeah, the it's... movie version, it does actually have some dialogue, but the actual theater musical version of Les Mis, every single word is sung. I I would never watch it, so. Yeah, it's why we never did it in uh, high school, because to be able to do that, you have to have a very strong vocal cast. But what's really fun in Sweeney Todd, a lot of people die. Oh, I love Sweeney Todd. <laughs> I've never seen it. I oh, loved it. It's it's a good one. I need to watch it. I it's still been on think my list. probably one of my favorite musicals though is still Rent. <laughs> I've never seen Rent. I just oh love I just love the music in Rent. And a lot I, of the I songs, know. like when I first heard them, like outside of watching it, like I didn't know that that's what it was from. Like the 525,600. Yeah. Yep. That's from Rent? Yes. That is yeah, from is. Rent. Yes. I had no idea. I, I just skipped through the songs. Even High School Musical, <laughs> I skipped through Oh, yeah, the that songs. used to like be they a, start sing- uh, That used to be an obsession of yours, wasn't it? Oh, come on. I love the movies. I just skipped through the songs. Even, even <laughs> classical Disney songs. I never saw the movies yeah. of here. High School Musical, but I had to know one or two of the songs because of drama in high school. When we did our dinner theater. Well, like like the good general Shang in Mulan, let's get down to business. Like a good general. <laughs> State business. Farm is there. <laughs> it's still a musical. I'm going to count it. So... <laughs> When we when we last left our heroes, they were singing. They were singing a musical. <laughs> that counts. When we last left our heroes, they had gone from a plus three encounter with a Sandman known as Hesharu. No, not that you guys asked her name. Oh, we did all all the way down to a negative three encounter with six flaming floating skulls oh. that you guys all dealt with handily. That was a six level fluctuation they went from level six to level zero and you guys you had basically mechanical whiplash there's no other way to describe it it was that was an insane fight at the end yeah like it was great just one hit taking him out speaking of which (sighs) you should share hero points 
You're right, Aisha. Thank you for reminding me. But you know what? It's sometimes it's sometimes fun to just revel and 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 enjoy the super easy fights. I I enjoy throwing those easy fights at at you guys every once in a while. I'm not I'm not all cruel. But let's talk about hero points. The MVP by a hairspray. How dare you? <laughs> Get out. No. Oh, no. He just did no. that. She's going to refuse it now. You do not give me a musical <laughs> reference in turn to my hero point. Take it back. Take back the hero Take point back. or the reference? Yeah, you're right. The hero point. The reference. Who's, the, who's the new MVP? <laughs> the well, if it's if it doesn't go to Angela, it's a three-way tie. Oh. So it kind of has to go. That, that oh means you have to give us all hero points. That's what it is. No, I don't think so. I'm going to give it to Tawny for... Uh, hold on, let me try this again. MVP to Tawny. She really held the fights today, and watching her resist the Sandman monster was awesome. Angela is also doing an amazing job with role-playing, and she is awesome at bringing life and death to Tawny, and I love hearing how she portrays her. Wait, MVP life and death? to Tawny. Life and depth. Depth. Oh, okay. Okay, that yeah. makes much more sense now. <laughs> there, you guys have... Uh, uh, listen... Side comment, I'm very proud of all your characters. You guys are very, like, bringing a lot of life to all of them. Uh, but finally, let's do the last MVP for Tawny. Uh, that sand lady was difficult, and even though Tawny wasn't the one to bring her down, shout out to Tariq, she toughed out a lot of hits and managed to deal some good damage, too. An honorable mention goes to basically everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> good job, guys. Uh, honorable mention to Habibi for the perfectly timed lay on hands. Honorable mention to Kepri for all those knowledge checks. Honorable mention to Tariq for finally getting the sand woman down because she was about to make us all take a nappy nap. Oh. <laughs> and then a permanent nappy nap after that. Ooh. <laughs> we don't need that. Yeah. But not until after this session. So, when we last left our heroes, I already did the summary. Let's skip that. <laughs> Let me describe this room that you guys are in. I already described this room and the one adjacent to it as being dining halls. This one being the master's dining room, which had which had since been rearranged to accommodate for these for basically this macabre display of all these skulls. And the one to the east is the servants' dining hall. It's a little bit smaller. This dining hall, by the way, the the silver plates, that's actually lootable. It's real silver, and you guys can probably take it if you want. The whole dining set, the goblets and the plates, are each worth four gold pieces. So the whole set is worth about uh, 42 gold pieces. Sorry, the plates are worth three gold. The goblets are worth four gold. But that's still, that's 42 gold just sitting here, just in, in tarnished silver. You just, a, a little spit shine here and there, and that's a lot of money. How much bulk is it? None. Uh, I'll take them. Well, in the meantime, um, do I can't remember if anybody detected magic in here. Tariq, did you detect any magic in here, or should I try to look around? You should try to look around. All right, so Capri's gonna, you know, try to detect magic and make sure we haven't missed anything important, especially since we don't want to run into any more traps. Fantastic. And Tawny's gonna be helping Gareth put the <laughs> all the silver that we can <laughs> sell in. In his bag. <laughs> take it. Take it all. They're just clattering and stuff. Um, I, yeah, I can imagine you guys have like a... Not not literally, but like if Kareth is walking around with a bunch of silverware in his backpack, he's just like... Jingle, jingle. Clank, jingle. clank, clank, clank. He like, clanks more pelt. than he normally does. Exactly. But hey, that's just that's just free gold. Uh, uh, but anyways, you, you cast Detect Magic, Kepri, and you do not detect any magic within your immediate vicinity other than the magic that is already on your party. However, as you're spending a couple seconds trying to, like, do -do 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 scan the area, you hear that same flapping sound. Oh, no. What's that mysterious flapping sound? Do we have any better direction of where it's coming from? Everyone roll me a perception check. Okay. I like rolling We're dice. rolling perception. Ramses might be able to tell where it's coming from. I know. Ramses is definitely going to roll one. For once, Ramses can actually roll this check. <laughs> Listen, dogs pick up on tons of stuff. Daisy stares at squirrels in the trees all the time. Yeah, but you were trying to use him before to, like, open doors and shit. Not literally, but still. Oh, uh, Daisy knows how to open doors. She nudges them. All right. Basically, everyone except for Kareth and Tawny. I guess they're too distracted Shocker. by the uh, the silver goblets and, and stuff. Uh, everyone can hear the flapping. It seems to be coming kind of from within this room, but also it keeps coming in and out. It seems like it's almost moving. 
Hmm. I'm happy we figured that out, even though we already knew it was weird. <laughs> Kepri, uh, that yeah. sounds like there's some kind of bird flying about. Maybe you should try to talk to the animal and see if it can come down. I'm curious as to what's floating around up there. Well, can I try to see if it is an animal? Can I roll a nature check? Uh, well, you can't even see it. You just hear the sound. Okay. And it's hard to identify just from the sound what it is. Can I roll a nature check to try to perceive if I uh, can identify the flapping noise? Um, I mean, I'll allow it. Yay. <laughs> I try not to say no on knowledge checks. <laughs> uh, yeah, it sounds like flapping. That could be one of a million different things. Great. Oh, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> I I have a pretty good modifier to that. I have a plus 11, so I don't even want to know what I got on the die. <laughs> who who else is good at nature? Habibi? Yeah. Habibi, do you think, think you can tell what that is? I don't think it's going to help. I think we should uh, maybe check out another room. Yeah. We haven't gone into this dining room over here, the little smaller one. Should we just pop in there? Make sure we got all those heads. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go east. Yay. Let's go east. 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 To the east. <laughs> oh, so as me and Katie are playing <laughs> Zelda and I'm trying to describe oh to God. her like where she needs to go, I forgot the word west. Uh, no. I, it, uh, it was just suddenly gone. <laughs> guys, I can see something around the corner. Oh, oh no. great. Um, Make Tawny go up front. She'll keep you safe. <laughs> Tawny. Okay. I'm coming. I'm on my way. Excuse me, Ramses. Excuse me. I can't quite see what it is, but it. Oh no! Oh. It says. Oh my God! What is it? Is that another bug? They're skeletons. Oh gosh! Didn't we just take care of heads? So, you guys come into the kitchen and you see two skeletons. One is on the ground and the other is leaning against the door. And as you come in, you can see that they are very clearly dead. Okay. Like dead, dead. Okay. Ooh, so it's I wonder. Safe. I wonder if the sand woman got them. Well, I mean, I'm sure she's That's... the one that had the head display. I mean, I wonder what else is around Should here. Should we do like a person, a nature check to see how they died, or a medicine check, or? Uh, yeah, you can try. You can try a religion or medicine, maybe even a survival check. I'll accept any of those three. In the meantime, let me describe the room for you. You find in front of you two stone tables that sit against the western wall of this room. They, it's clearly basically the counter where they would prepare the meals. Uh, there's a third counter that occupies the southeastern corner, and a small square wooden butcher's block stands in the northeast corner. There is also a stone oven that sits in the middle of the northern wall between the stone counter and the wooden butcher's block. There are two humanoid skeletons that lie beneath the northwestern uh, table and the other one against the western door that you assume leads outwards. You mean eastern door? Uh, huh? Sorry, northeastern door. Yes, correct. So I don't North. know my east and west either. Northeastern. <laughs> northeastern. North <laughs> uh, they're both surrounded by smashed uh, pots and lids, and there evidently was a small skirmish here. That's unsettling. I wonder if they were fighting each other or fighting something else. Well, with your survival, religion, and or medicine checks, I can tell you guys that the uh, the skeletons were, uh, they seem to be dressed in ancient or Syriani garb. These creatures probably were once the guards of this estate. They seem to belong to the House of Panthero. You can see maybe on like one of their shirts a very faded uh, hieroglyph that represents or, like a uh, what's it called? It's his when name you have tag. A, no, there's a specific word for like a series of hieroglyphs together in like a big oval, and I can't remember. Oh my what that, gosh! But, uh, cartouche. Uh, a cartouche. A cartouche. Yes, do you see a cartouche that represents the House of Panthero? But yeah, they they seem to have uh, rusted daggers uh, still wedged between their ribs. Uh, so there there was some fight here, but uh, they clearly were killed by this dagger. But you don't know how or by what or by whom um, or when even. It's it's hard to tell. Being skeletons, they died many centuries ago, and they kind of just started rotting. So it's it's hard to tell when they finally became destroyed. You know Capri's I mean? gonna take a step in and try to detect magic and see if there's anything maybe particularly about the dagger or about any of the objects in the room. No, these are just old uh, rusted daggers. Um, they 
the, there's nothing magical anymore about these undead huh, anymore. bodies. anymore. They've got uh, weapons on them, like a short bow, dagger, kopesh, arrows. Hmm. They were very well armed. They were the guards of this place. They were meant to defend it from the plague of madness that happened uh, about 2,000 oh, years ago. Is there anything else in this room that we should be picking up on? Uh, you give it a good look through, and it just seems like an empty kitchen otherwise. Well, I'm gonna... Should I try to move this guy, and we could go through this door? Like, maybe there's a reason he was over here by the door? That's a good idea. Oh, I didn't even see that door. Habibi, look at you, smart one. <laughs> yep. Sometimes. I'm so strong. I moved it. <laughs> Just shove the body over. <laughs> I imagine it's like the uh, like the the skeleton from the Lord of the Rings, where like uh, it just like a tiny little movement, and it just sort of like the whole thing like rattles and collapses uh, beneath Habibi's touch. So gross. Uh, but Habibi, you seem to have found the pantry. Uh, it's a small room that doesn't have any more food in it because you know, last I checked, food doesn't usually survive in the hot desert sun uh, for two thousand years. So everything here is completely empty, but uh, there it it was clearly meant to be the pantry. Oh. And there is an archway to the south where Kareth is now that he's entered the room with you to that leads out into the western courtyard. So god damn it, the eastern courtyard. I don't know my west and east. We've ruined whatever. everybody. Because we keep on using weast. <laughs> yeah. The weast meme has corrupted everyone. East. I see a well. Well, well, well. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, well. So this courtyard is much smaller and clearly less decorated than the one to the west. The family's <laughs> yard. This appears to probably be the servant's yard. Mm. Uh, you can see there are small houses here, uh, kind of like shacks, where you assume the servants may have uh, at one point slept or rested in. And this otherwise spacious yard fills the compound's eastern side of the house. <laughs> Proud of you. I got it. Uh, to the far east, there are several small uh, stone outbuildings that I have just described, and they have been built right into the compound's outer wall. There is a well that stands in between two of these outbuildings, opposite a stone table, and benches that sit on the shadow of the house to the west. And then you can also see that there are two sets of steps. Uh, one that some of the party just came through uh, from the kitchen. They journeyed south, and then there was a set of doors. They journeyed east, uh, while Habibi and uh, Kareth went north into the pantry and then south out of the archway, meeting each other kind of like in a big circle. Uh, but yeah, you guys find this otherwise deserted servant's yard. Um, Tariq kind of fondly remembers uh, growing up, always making a wish at Wells just for the fun of it. So he is going to pull out... Uh, a copper piece and he's going to flip it into the well and you know just and he's gonna kind of close his eyes and make a quick wish oh what's the wish <laughs> you can't tell what the <laughs> wish is otherwise it won't come true he doesn't have to tell the party but he uh, well, I, I wanna know. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you can send the GM a uh, a private message. <laughs> yeah, a private message. That's the word. It could be our banter next week. Okay, can we right. see anything down the well if we look down? Uh, you look down and it seems to be a, uh, like, you, you stare down into darkness. It just uh, goes down into pitch black. Tariq, you said you tossed a coin in there, right? Yes. Do we hear, like, a, uh, like a splash or anything? Or does it just kind of, like, hit the bottom, like, in no empty it sound? Just, it kind of falls. You don't, you don't hear it hit anything so either a it goes down into infinity and it's too far down to to have hit anything or uh or b it hits sand and it got muffled out all right meanwhile oh. <laughs> habibi and tawny have journeyed north and opened yet another door and oh split the party it's not that split they're like 20 feet away from you i didn't go through the door i was waiting I appreciate that. Well, you guys opened what must be a granary because there is a uh, there's a basically a domed roof here with a small door in the front, and it sits against the northern wall of the compound between some of these outhouses. And as you guys open the door, bursting forth from beneath the sand, oh no, you see I knew it, a small swarm 
rather, it's a large swarm of tiny little scarabs. Aww. I need everyone to roll me initiative. Ew. How do you feel oh, about gosh, this, Tawny? It. More bugs. It's always Habibi. It's always him. <laughs> <laughs> Tawny is just like slowly looking at Habibi. Like, again? <laughs> I didn't need to. It's always bugs with Habibi. <laughs> How many times has Habibi set off a trap that has a <laughs> You know what? I'm so sorry to bug you. Oh! Not to be a pest, but... Oh, my gosh. Oh, goodness you gracious. You were all pesting. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of puns fast enough like that. Does that bug you, Ashley? It does bug uh, me. Oh, my goodness. I hate all of you. Just kidding. I love you all. All right. You all uh, started it. Perfectly reactive to the swarm that he <laughs> triggered. We have top of the initiative round one goes to Habibi. Let's see what this sick cleric has got for us. Oh man, I I really am sick of this. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, what do I got? I oh, those two spells are gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he needs rest, guys. <laughs> nah, nah, we got cantrips. It's fine. It's fine. I do have, I have plenty of cantrips. Like, you know what? I got, I've got electric arc, y'all. Let's, let's just, yeah. Zippity zap, don't look back. I was just about to say <laughs> that. Heck yeah. <laughs> we all know what's about to happen, right? No, I don't know if I have any reactions on these guys. You don't know that. Uh, I am going to roll the reflex save. I don't know if it's their highest save. We just know that it is, it's there somewhere. Uh, I did get a 28 though. Oh my god. That's what I had a feeling was about to happen. <laughs> oh. Now, now, quick question. Your DC is normally 19, right? Yeah, it's like 18 right now. Ooh. That rule sucks. That really sucks. I, I'm just so broken up about that. Yeah. I, I'm, oh, he's I'm honestly so sad. So heartbroken. He critically succeeded that save. I know. Congrats. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Kudos. <laughs> Shocking. All right. All right. Well, you got one action left. Um, for my last action, I am going to uh, move. He's running away 10 now. Feet down here in front of Kepri and beside Carrot. Oh, that's so sweet of you. You really shouldn't have grouped up all like that. That's so <laughs> oh, nice of you. Look no. at all those people. All right. Oh, well. No. <laughs> Hi, Habibi. That's, that's guys, just... guys, I don't have attack of opportunity yet. <laughs> so, oh, no. For. For the listening audience, Habibi was next to Tani. He now moved, so he's next to Kareth, Kepri, and Ramses in a two by two square. And I wonder if this two by two swarm would really appreciate that. I think they would. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so, so they're going to swarm. He did not consent to this kind of. Thing. <laughs> I agree. Habibi, Habibi insisted that you guys join him in the swarm. <laughs> Oh, a GM dreams about this. <laughs> Habibi bugs really do follow you, don't they? Yeah. Just very yeah. unfortunate. I think it's I'm cursed. Oh no. <laughs> he's gonna turn into a, he's gonna turn into an oracle. He's a, he's a multi class into oracle. <laughs> So the scarab swarm kind of like crawls and they kind of like uh, move through Tani's legs all over her body, oh, no. like around her everywhere. And they start doing the same towards Kareth, Habibi, Kepri, and Ramses. First action stride, second action swarming bites. You see all these bugs crawling through your clothes oh, over Ramses' ew. fur everywhere. Nope, nope. Nope, I don't like it. Oh gosh, it. I need to get him off Ramses. I need all four of you to roll me a reflex save. Oh gosh, dang it. Hey, it's a basic one, though. It's basically just a reflex save. Mm, that's not <laughs> terrible. I'll leave it. Hey, we'll as, a, at least you guys are lucky this isn't like the flesh-eating scarab swarm type. All right, uh, let's go down the list. That Alyssa, exists? I, I could make it exist. No. I kind of want it to exist. Why I might make it exist later. No, no, Ooh, But that no, could be like a double-digit swarm. Nah, 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 it's going to come back later. Oh, crap. <laughs> All right, let's go down the list. Alyssa, what'd you get? Um, I rolled a 10 for a total of 16. 16 is a failure. Katie, what'd you get? Oh no, that makes me worried about mine. Um, I also rolled a 10 on the die, but for an 18. An 18 is a success exactly. Oh, I did it! <laughs> uh, Ashley, what did you get? <laughs> so Capri rolled an 8 on the die for a total of, or sorry, an 18 on the, no, wait. 
an 18 on the die for a total of 25. Sorry, math. Oh, jeez. But poor Ramses didn't do quite as well and rolled a 15 total. Oof. All right. Kepri succeeds. Almost a critical success. Oh, yay. Meanwhile, Ramses, you said 16 total? He failed. 15 total. Still a failure. <laughs> oh, poor Ramsey. Sorry. All right. I didn't... I didn't do I didn't do too well on the damage. I rolled six total. So if you guys succeeded, you take three. If you failed, you take uh, the full six. However, for Ramses and Habibi, I need you guys to additionally roll me a fortitude save. Oh, no. oh my oh, gosh, no. really? I do not want to do this. <laughs> Wait, how much how much damage did you say? Six total. Ramses. So I will take three. Correct. Oh, no. Yep, same here. Oh, no is exactly what I'm thinking. Oh, no. All right. Uh, again, down the line. Ashley, would you roll? Oh, well, Ramsey's didn't do too good. Got a 15 total again. Again? All yep. right. Uh, Alyssa, what did you get? Well, I um, I rolled a two on the die for a total of eight. Oh, jeez. Oh, An eight is going to be a critical failure. Ooh. Oh no. Uh, this was Now I have no idea how to handle this. Here's what I'm going Here's what I'm going to rule. This is also fill fever, which you are currently suffering from. Oh, yeah, great. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now no. you did critically fail, but this is a different instance of fill fever. So, I am not going to make you go up two stages on your original filth fever, I'm gonna make you go up one stage on your filth fever. You are now at stage three of filth cool. fever. Which is what? Sickened one, which you already are, but you are now also slowed one as this fever oh, is just no. overwhelming oh, you. Oh no. If you fail again, you become unconscious. <gasps> and if you fail again after that, you are dead. Oh, this is great. So don't fail two times or don't critically fail on the next one. In the meantime, I'm just going to drag and drop this, uh, this this fill fever disease onto Ramses because uh, he also failed. He's currently in stage one. No. So he is in the carrier, carrier phase. phase. Oh, no. Ramses, I'm so sorry. Why do I keep screwing up? You guys want to know what the best part about all of this is? No. Uh, no. That was only two actions. Oh my what? gosh. They moved and then they attacked. Oh my gosh. I feel like that attack should be two actions because you got two people. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, you technically got four. All right, yeah. I did. Even more so. Should be two. You know what? I think I'm going to do the swarming bites again. I just, I, I, I gotta. I have Wabba! to. Wabba! I have to. I have to. Wabba! I have to. It's, no, it's you don't. the GM code compels you, me to do so. You very much so do not have to. <laughs> I I feel physically and emotionally and contractually obligated to. <laughs> oh shit! I'm. Oh no no no! We are not putting Ramses through this again. <laughs> he is going to use the hero point because he rolled a nat one. Oh my gosh! Yes, that would have oh been. Oh my god! Good. Well, I'm rolling again. So ha. All right. Did you get another nat one? No, I just re I just switched it over from Kepri to him. I can feel it in the air. There's blood oh, in the air. Oh, thank goodness. Never mind. <laughs> there was blood in the air. <laughs> Not anymore. All right. Well, let's go down the line one more time. Katie, what'd you get? I rolled a 19 on the die. You succeed this time. Oh, you succeed last time. That's too. on the die. Oh, on the die. Why do you guys always get me with that? <laughs> <laughs> For a total of a 27. Oh, a 27 is just shy of a critical success. You so did succeed, though. I would have though. to get a natural 20. Yeah, well, uh, Ashley, what did you roll? Kepri rolled a 13 on the die for a total of 20. Nice. Ramses rolled a 18 on the die for a total of 26. Nice. Both of you guys succeed this time. Ooh. Habibi, what did you roll? I rolled a 2 for a total of eight. Uh, oh my gosh. Phoebe, no. Well, what was that about him being cursed? Those of you who succeeded, you guys get two points of uh, piercing and slashing damage. Habibi, on the other hand, you critically failed. You're gonna take double a five, uh, which is 10 points of damage. 
Habibi. And once again, I need you to roll me a oh, fortitude Oh, Habibi, save. you can do it's it. Very you important. Can do it. This is an important fortitude save because you're already susceptible to this uh, brand of filled fever. What'd you get? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. You're killing me. Do you me. have a hero You're point? You're killing me. You're killing me and Habibi. Do you have a hero <laughs> point? Did you already use your yeah, hero? Yeah, but if I... No, I have one hero point use it. and it's still really early. This is you the time Literally, you are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean... That's his fear. Come on. Come on. Yeah, that's his fear. That is fear of dying, yeah. <laughs> Come on, what'd you get? Fine, I'll re-roll. <laughs> What was it? Was it a natural one? No, it was four. Oh, jeez. Okay, okay, okay. This is better, so this is good. <laughs> okay. So, I originally rolled four and had ten, but I just re-rolled, and I got a 16, <gasps> so I have 22. <gasps> Yay! I thought you said 16 total. A 22 is a success. Oh, thank goodness. <sighs> We move on to Tani. You see Habibi, Kareth, Ramses, Kepri. Everyone is being swarmed by hundreds of these scarab beetles. What do you do about We're it? We're fine. <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. Most of us are fine. Habibi is much less fine. So. <laughs> well, so here's the thing. I have something in my pocket. Oh. oh. Oh, oh. What is in your pocket? Oh, oh, I know what's in her pocket. I just remembered. <laughs> uh, I, I want to know. <laughs> no! <laughs> don't! Katie just remembered too! Oh, no. Wait, what? I have one as well. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh oh. This was something you guys I, picked I up, I think, in the tomb of Akintepe. Yeah, yep. She has a bomb! Yeah. Who gave the cat a bomb? <laughs> <laughs> I think you gave the cat the bomb. Uh, I let's not bring it. attention to pass. <laughs> she's gonna. Possible she's about mistakes. to fumigate. Is that what's happening? <laughs> this was. <one. laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think this was. Uh, this was way back in episode five. I think like getting shafted. You guys went down the shaft. <laughs> you saw the dead elf in the corner. Like, oh cool. What does he have? Alchemist fire. I'll take some of these. Oh yeah, because sure we made the joke them. about how uh, Tawny wants to firebomb Habibi's dads. Yep, I mean, and yep. now she might firebomb just straight up Habibi. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so here's Poetic. the thing. So what is the um, the blast radius of this? I bomb? do believe it is a five foot burst or five foot emanation splash. So like, if you target any square, like either Carrot Square, Habibi Square, or whatever, it will be the five foot around them. So no matter who you target, you're getting everyone else. Yeah, because it just has regular splash. Yeah, this isn't first edition. But, but it has a it has a twenty foot range. Like I can throw it twenty feet. <sighs> All right. But you're still gonna get two people. I see what and you're saying. I see what you're thinking. You're aiming like, for the far side. So, good news and bad news. The good news is you could target a square. The bad news is you could target a square in first edition. <laughs> oh. You have to hit a creature. Mm. Well, how's everyone's uh, reflex save? <laughs> Obviously, uh, I am not good right now. <laughs> Ramsey's is a plus seven. Um, Capri's is a plus I seven. Eight. I have an eight. <laughs> Kara's um, like, I can take it. I, I can take it. But regardless <laughs> of who you hit, with it having a five foot burst, you're going to hit uh, Habibi if you use it. It's only one splash damage. That's true. Okay, listen though. Last time it was one splash damage. <laughs> yeah, but I was already dying. But we don't have to bring that yeah. part up. Okay. <laughs> Honestly, okay, who so Tony's gonna hold splash attack when someone's already dying. Aaron? She didn't know. I didn't realize that my powers were so strong. <laughs> <laughs> they were killer. <laughs> and what if he didn't die? It's fine. Yeah, it's it's behind us. Okay, um, okay, I guess I'm gonna do this. So, Tawny is going to reach into her pocket <laughs> and she's going to pull out her alchemist fire. And I guess she's just gonna throw it into the middle, like, cause she wants to get those bugs. All right, roll me that ranged attack roll. <sighs> um, so how would I, oh, there, oh, I would draw it. There we go. First yes. action, draw it. And then... Second action, toss it. Yeah, here we go. Holding my breath. It's fire. Holding your breath isn't going to do shit. 
I am going to re-roll uh -oh. it. Uh-oh. I bet you got a two. I got a six, actually. Oh, better wow. than a two. Fine. Do better than my estimations. <laughs> I got the exact same thing. What? <laughs> ah, welcome to my kind of luck. Two sixes in a row. That's a God, bull. Is that six on the die or six total? Six on the die, both times. Sheesh. So what's the total? 11. Okay, that's very important because an 11 is not a critical miss, which means it still takes the splash damage. Okay. And so do we. Well, you guys do anyway. Yeah, everyone is going to take the splash damage, but- no, I'm not. What do you mean? I have fire resistance. <laughs> well, never mind then. <laughs> okay, Kit, so special over there. <laughs> I know. Here's the good news. Tawny, obviously, you knew this was a thing. You throw the grenade and you manage to, like, in the commotion, accidentally hit, like, the wall and it blows up there. It hits Habibi, it hits Kepri, it, hit, it hits Ramses. Each of them takes just a tiny bit of fire damage. Like, you see, like, singes on their clothes and they pat it away quickly. But the scarab beetles, they don't like the fire. They take massive damage from this. Nice. You have one action remaining. I'm gonna rage. Oh, she did the thing! <laughs> she did <laughs> the thing! She goes. Do we have a sound effect for Tawny going into rage yet? No. Like, meow. Meow. Do like the, the cat fight song though? Like there's yeah. a cat fight <laughs> or something like that. I know the sound I want, but it, I'm pretty sure it's copyrighted. Has anyone here watched Owl House? Mm -mm, no, yes. I haven't. I heard good things about it, though. I, who said that they've watched it? Alyssa? Alyssa, yeah. King Squeak of Rage. King Squeak of Rage. <laughs> I'm imagining a tiny perfect. little squeak. It, it's like, I, I can't even do it. I'll find a clip for you to, yeah, to share us you later. what I'm talking about. All right, Tariq. It is your turn. Okay, so Tariq was just kind of, you know, having like a nice peaceful moment. All of a sudden he looks over, <laughs> giant like swarm of bugs getting on everybody. <laughs> Tawny just throws out a bomb and then these like bugs just streak and he's like, oh, I guess that looks like a good idea, I guess. And uh, he like, he's gonna run up next to Kepri and Ramses and he's going to do a spell strike with Produce Flame. Or at least he's going to try to. You can do it. Come on, Tariq. Would you Tariq. wish to have a peaceful afternoon? Because I don't think it came true. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. My wish is a secret. And I rolled a 15 on uh, the attack. So I'm going to reroll that. Because that obviously All right. is. Ah. You guys don't know that. You don't know what the AC is. Well, I'm not willing to risk two actions for that. Fair enough. All right. Much better. 27 total. Nice. A 27 is going to hit. Roll me that juicy damage. All right, so regular damage, he takes um, 10, or they take 10 points. And then I also have my produce flame damage, which is another six points of fire damage. Beautiful. Nice. They take the they take the full fire damage, but they don't take all of the bludgeoning damage. Okay, so then they do take some of it though. So he like kind of does like this burst of fire uh, arcing throughout his staff, and then he's going to like kind of continuing the motion a little bit. And he's going to enter into um, arcane cascade. You can next turn. You moved. Oh, that's right. Shoot. All right. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it has to be the first action next turn, so don't okay. forget, Kareth. It is your turn. Okay, I know what I want to do, but we... <laughs> All right. Hey, That's concerning, uh... that that noise. <laughs> I, I, know what, I know what you want. I know what he wants yeah, to do, too. I know what Katie All right, so this is... Uh, okay, so here are your guys' options, right? Either I do it here, and I hit all of us. Oh. Oh. I can move here and get me and Habibi in it, or I go here and it's Ramses. Uh, it's a reflex <laughs> save, so... I have a question. It's a five foot burst, right? Yes. Why can't you move to the Northwest corner here and hit only the swarm? <laughs> oh, I didn't think that. Oh, that might be helpful. I think I like that. I always forget about diagonal. <laughs> I always forget that diagonal is still five feet. For some reason, my brain thinks that diagonal is 10 feet. 
It's all right. It, it should be really. It's. I mean, that's all kind right. of how Pythagoras sort of works. But no. Maybe so Katie like... suggested going north in between Habibi and Tani, sort of, or west directly adjacent to Ramses, but not diagonally, where she would be away from everyone <laughs> except for the swarm. All right. So we're gonna do that plan then. Um, so I'm going to move to the northwest. There I'm you going go. to at. Let me reiterate that. I'm going to step to the northwest. All right. And then I am going to go explode. Exploding. Boom. I get to roll a reflex save. DC 19. DC 19, jeez. There's the um, damage. All right. I rolled somewhat decently. 24. All right. So success only. So you will mm -hmm. still take some of that damage. How much damage was that? Um, all right. So it's 3d6 cold damage. So it came out to a total of 13 points of cold damage. Perfect. And let me roll my unstable check. Nope. All right. No more unstable actions for me. So if you die, I cannot burn you back to life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. What a shame. Uh, it takes 11 points of cold damage from that amazing burst. This thing Damn. is looking badly injured. Kepri, it is your turn. Kepri has watched fire work really well on this and watched her brother do an awesome produce flame. And she's going to just kind of look over him, nod, and she's also going to cast Produce Flame. All right. Cast away. Cast away. Let's see what you got. All right. Oh, well, that, never mind. Two on the die for a total of 11. It's probably not going <laughs> to hit it, huh? Uh, Probably not. I believe you might have a hero point left. Uh, Nope, I don't. I used it for Ramsey's. Okay. Oh, that's right. So I have one action left. I'm just going to, can I just try to smash some of them? Just swing at them? Sure. You could also command Ramses to try and help with that, too. Oh, shoot. Activate Ramses. <laughs> He's just the pet. He's just following I along. I love him. All right. Jaw. Jaw strike. I rolled a 13 on the die for a total of 20. A 20 is going to hit. Roll that damage. Oh, minimum damage. Three. I rolled a one on the die. <laughs> All right. It do be like that sometimes. Unfortunately, the Scarab Swarm is so numerous that Ramses is just kind of biting and he's only taking out like one at a time, effectively doing no damage. Well, we're going to try one more time with our minus five attack penalty. A 13 on the die this time oh. for a total of 15. A 15 total is insufficient. Dang it. All right. Well, Kepri's out. She's, she's trying. She's like, good job, Ramses. You did so good. And... You know, she tried to put the flames out of her hands and they just kind of went <laughs> I imagine Ramses is doing the thing that Daisy's doing where they just like bark at like, <laughs> they're just barking the entire time. Like, this is going to scare them away, right? Yep. That, yeah. Or like standing up trying to bite at bugs, can't catch them. That, that sounds about right too. Oh, poor Ramses. Well, Habibi, you're not looking too hot over there, but it is your turn. What do you got for me? Um, Habibi is going to try to get out of the swarm again and move back up next to Tani where he had started and should have just stayed in the first place. <laughs> you know, moving right. was a good idea and I can see everybody else did that except for Kepri and Ramses. We're still just in the swarm voluntarily. You know what? It's and fine. You guys you guys are druids and then like a, a Ramses. You, you belong in the bugs. <laughs> What's your next two actions? He is going to try to do electric arc again because that is his only <laughs> uh, option uh, cantrip wise. Come on, you can you do it, this. Habibi. You got this. Electric Art Club. All right. I rolled. Ooh. I rolled a 16 total. <gasps> it failed. <Woo! laughs> Yay. Take, take 10 points of damage. Dumb bugs. This thing is near death. It is so close. There's just like a couple of these scarabs left. They're going to go down one step with their first action towards Ramses, Kepri, and Tariq, surrounding the family. Rude. Yep, agreed. And we're going to do... We're family too now. <laughs> it's true. Uh, the more... The more long... Longer? Fa the more histo... Whatever. <laughs> I'm just going to roll the... actual nuclear family? Yeah, I'm just going to roll the Swarming Bites twice, so why don't you guys all roll me two reflex saves? You know what? I don't think that's that's kind. Uh, I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> All right, that's Kepri's first. Great. <laughs> uh, let's see. Basic reflux and. Yes, ma'am. Good lord, I cannot Ooh. catch a break. I can. I rolled really good on that. Damage. Oh joy! I'm those. so happy for you. <laughs> All right, well, the Ramsey's second one I accidentally first. rolled <laughs> myself. It's alright. Uh, 
Second one was a 17 on the die. All right. But it didn't, oh, it shows up. <laughs> oh, it's 24 total, sorry. Okay, so 24 total for a success. And uh, what was the other one? Yay, okay. So I rolled a 16 on the die for a total of 23 for my up. All right. Okay, so 23, wait, what was the other one? The other one, um, I rolled uh, 16 on the die for 24. So 24 and 23, both success, not a critical success. Capri, what'd you get? We're going to start with Ramsey's. So Ramsey's oh rolled a 22 for the first one and a 20 for the second one. All right. Uh, both successes. Perfect. Um, Capri's another story. Uh, <laughs> Capri for the first uh -oh. one rolled an 11. Total? Yep. All right. Uh -oh. <laughs> and what was the second one? A 16. Total? Yep. Oh, no. All right. No, exactly. Kepri's just kind of wincing oh, here, no. getting bit real hard. So all right, let's handle let's handle the damage first. Uh, I rolled a total of a seven plus an eight. That is a total of fifteen. Oh my gosh, you're trying to kill me, literally. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, because it does help you guys actually. You take them both half at uh, at a time if you if you succeeded. So Ramses, instead of taking fifteen, is actually going to take a total of seven. Okay. Still. Actually, it would have been the same either way. It doesn't matter. So, Ramses takes seven. Tariq, you succeeded both times. You also take seven. Okay. Kepri, you failed. You take the full 15. Yeah, Kepri took it all. She, yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. Because you failed twice, I need you to roll me two fortitude saves oh. against Filthy. Oh, my gosh. I can't do this. Alrighty. Kepri... Capri's rolling the first one. Not a good, not a good start to this game. Is a seventeen total gonna be enough? Oh, it is one off from a success. Oh crap! Do you have any more hero points? Nope. Did you already I'm use out. your hero point? Yep. So now I'm sick. You got this. All right, we'll be okay. one more. We can do it. We can do it. Come on, come on, dice gods. Right now, ne uh, Nethus, we really need your help. <laughs> Nothing's don't give a shit. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? I just rolled the exact same thing. You advance to stage two oh, of Phil no. Fever. You oh, are God. sickened one. Habibi, I feel how you feel. <laughs> hey, you're still slightly better than They're coming Habibi. down with a bug, guys. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I, oh my God. I'm, so far, there are... Four out of six party members suffering from filth fever at different stages. Hey, I'm actually <laughs> I'm actually sick, so now I can just not mute my mic when I cough, right? Exactly. Yeah, this <laughs> is just immersive. That's all it is. Tawny, it is your turn. Um, if I want to get to the other side, um, I can just do you that. You can walk through a swarm. Okay, that's yeah. what I was thinking that I could. Okay. Heck yeah. So just walk right through them. Squash, squash, squash. Yeah. <laughs> On the way there. Um. <laughs> But my question is, so as I get over here, do I have flanking? Sure, absolutely. Okay, and then I'm going to do an improvised weapon like we did last time where I turn my great axe on the side like a broom. Okay. And just, and try to smack. All right, you saw Tariq's uh, bludgeoning weapon do a little bit more damage than say, uh, my axe. Ramses is piercing or slashing damage. So yeah, let's see what you got. Uh, minus two, right? Yes. 17 on the die for a total of 24. Barbarians, man. A 24 is going to hit. Yes. Roll that damage. Kill him. Kill him. 11 points of damage. With a final mighty smack with the wide half of the axe, you just smash like six bugs left, and the remaining part of the swarm finally... <laughs> dies as this swarm dissipates and the, like I imagine like one or two beetles scurry off in the distance. Oh, Tawny is that following is the them. End. And she's like <laughs> she's, she's like squish, squish, squish. Yeah, she's just like following <laughs> the ones that are scurrying away and like stamp 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 stamp. <laughs> there you go. That is the end of this scarab swarm encounter. So how do you get rid of fell fever? There are a couple ways to treat uh, a disease. One is to spend eight hours of downtime oh. treating a disease. And we don't have that luxury. Uh, in which case, which you would roll a medicine check and you would give a bonus to the person fighting off the disease. The other uh, way is to just literally fight it off using fortitude saves. We could also go to the um, 
We could also go to the uh, the, 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 the temple place. Silver people. and gold again. <laughs> silver and gold again. <laughs> Abadar. All that glitters is silver and gold. Well, let me give you some good news. Um, you guys can take some time to heal yourselves. And while you're doing so, I imagine the people who are more healthy, like maybe Tawny, Tariq, and Kareth, you start exploring a little bit uh, around while Habibi and Kepri work their magic. And in the granary, you find a corpse. Oh. Is that up here? What, where she opened yes. the door? Exactly. In the domed roof uh, to the north, where the scarabs came from. It seems that the scarabs were indeed munching on some flesh, specifically the flesh of this, uh, of this, uh, this old Osiriani man. It's hard to tell uh, how old this body is because the flesh has been completely, like, chewed up. Uh, and the human skeleton is basically all that remains. However, the clothes seem fresh. They seem slightly newer than, say, 2,000 years ago. So perhaps he was some sort of mm. uh, tomb raider, maybe someone who came illegally into the necropolis. And now you understand why it was illegal to come into the necropolis because of shit like this. Oh. I mean, he kind of deserved it. <laughs> However, he did come prepared. He brought with him a cold iron war flail. Interesting. Ooh. A war flail, for the record, is kind of like uh, it's a uh, it's a two handed like mace. Effectively, it's it's it has a giant iron head attached to a chain. You just swing it around, you and flail I do believe it this is the you flail <laughs> it mean. around. But it is made out of cold iron. Cold iron is a metal, a, a very rare metal, specifically designed to do extra damage towards demons, fey, uh, divs, that sort of stuff. Like, like extra planar creatures. It's very, very effective. And uh, I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it might be the holy weapon of Osiris? Heal me, baby, one more time. <laughs> one is a one-handed flail, the other is a two-handed flail. Uh, the war flail is the favored weapon of Al... Alglenways? Garion, Grotus, and oh. Imbrex. Grotus has recently come up in our uh, replay of the first book of Tyrant's Grasp. Yep, sure has. The moon? Spoilers for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the moon guy? Yes. Okay. Uh, he's also, what, the god of madness and things like that? He's the god of madness of the end times of the apocalypse, basically. He is literally the moon that uh, floats above uh, Phrasma's boneyard. Oh. Anyways... So Habibi takes about, let's say, an hour healing you guys all up back to full. And there's this cold iron flail. Who would like the cold iron flail? Um, what type of weapon is it? A flail. Uh, I think <laughs> it is a martial weapon. <laughs> it's a flail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is martial and it is two-handed. Tawny could use Tariq's it. good with keeping his stick. Yep, Tariq could use it and I think Kareth can use it. Those are the three. Capri says, no thanks, it's too big. <laughs> and I'm sick. Uh, I I could use it, but Kareth will stick with his innovation. Up to you, Tawny. You want it? Um. So can I put the cold iron on my great axe? Is that a possibility? I was wondering about that. I I'm pretty sure the cold iron is smelted, like, or the flail is smelted from the cold iron. I will dig into it. I'm not a hundred percent sure if you could like melt this cold iron war flail and like m like melt. Or smelt it into a war axe head and then like re or change the head of the great axe. I'll think about it. At the very least, it will be expensive. Okay. Yeah. Katani needs to change process. her uh, great axe to have like the blade on one side and a maul on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> there are combination weapons. Yeah. That's, that's what, what she I, needs. If she, that way, for all these dang bugs that take bludgeoning damage. <laughs> well, in the meantime, so you bugs. can just. Uh, you can just com uh, combine your weapons the old-fashioned way by just switching them out <laughs> with a couple actions. But you know what? It is what it is. So does a flail do bludgeoning damage? Yes. Yes. Okay. And you won't take the minus two penalty anymore. And they're both... And it's a two-handed one, right? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. This is going to be fun. What a beast. <laughs> <laughs> two great weapons. <laughs> If only I was strong enough to hold one in each hand. Dude, that would be so broken. <laughs> what about when you're giant? I don't know. 
I because that doesn't happen until like level six. Level I was gonna say earliest. yeah, like six level or higher. Which fun fact? Speaking of, because you always bring this up, sixth level is where you get giant stature, but it also is where you get access to attack of opportunity. Yeah. I know, I'm a countdown. You have to I want attack of opportunity, and I want us to be able to level up to level four eventually soon, because <laughs> I want my wounded rage. <laughs> <laughs> well. You guys already know I play with milestones, and you can already probably guess that if you finish this mansion, you will level up. So it's on you guys. Let's do it. Oh, there's the what exit. Do you do? Let's go. Right. Yeah, man. <laughs> we're done. Let's go. Speed run. No, no, no. You oh, gotta nope. fully explain. Nope. What was nope. that, Kareth? Nope. What um, no. nope. Tariq nope. is nope. going to uh, kind oh, of no. look around. T- Tony, um, you wanna you wanna test out that new weapon? Um. Well, first, I want to look at this room to the north real quick. I okay. just want to check. But we could we could totally do that and completely avoid the the south. Okay. So for anyone who missed it, there's definitely nothing there. Because I'm pretty sure some of my players might have missed it too. Kareth decided to eagerly finish this mansion, ran south, saw something. No, I didn't. And no, immediately didn't. ran Why back. Why does it Kareth what? always like sees it and then runs away? <laughs> right. <laughs> I did no such thing. How dare you? He doesn't you? grow up to be a 250-year-old elf by just running into danger. Yeah, Habibi learned that yeah, from him. Yeah, he apparently runs away <laughs> quite a lot. Yes, Habibi could learn a few things from him. No warning. He doesn't say anything. He just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> so much shade. Poor Habibi. Love you, Habibi, but... Them bugs. <laughs> Love you, Habibi, but... <laughs> but them bugs. <laughs> You guys remember what Habibi means in Arabic, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> My darling. I just think it's funny. <laughs> and to Habibi, My yeah, but, but, I love your butts. Anyways, uh, so we're just going full Arab. So uh, you find in here what has to be the servants' quarters. This this very tiny, cramped, small apartment, uh, small room seems to have once held uh, what you can only assume six beds. And uh, they were all like bunk beds, so like two on um, two over here in this northwestern corner, two over here uh, in the northeastern corner, and two more in the southeastern corner. Just two on top of each other, um, six beds total in this very tiny living area. To the room to the north is a tiny closet where you find a tiny uh, bucket. You can assume that's where they washed up, but for the most part, this is where the the servants probably lived. Uh, and as you can expect. There is not much left in here. Probably never was to begin with. Okay. That would be a hard place to live. What if someone snores really loud and you don't like the sound of snoring? I also want to say he described a lot of it as tiny, so I'm imagining these like little people <laughs> living here. <laughs> lots of lots of Capri sized people. I yeah. I was basically just I was just basically describing my freshman call or college freshman dorm room. <laughs> That's basically what I just You had a bucket to wash up in? I, Fancy. It was just a sink. Okay, it was just a sink, but we didn't have like an actual toilet in our dorm room. It was literally just a single room. It didn't even have a closet. It had like a hook or like not even a hook it had like a like a rung or uh, what it was called like a pole and that's where you hang all your clothes but you had a single dresser that you had to share between the three the 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 different guys and like a rack Wait, where you, you only put had your one dresser yeah one dresser with several drawers so i had like some on top for me and the the bottom ones were for him you definitely should have had two dressers <laughs> well we didn't so <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> Oh, that's really funny. That's just awkward, though. <laughs> like, sharing <laughs> a dresser fine. with a guy. It's fine. I guess I will now go south and see what scared Kareth so much. So were both these rooms servants' quarters? Uh, the ones to the south, actually. The the southern uh, house, just north of the well. Before we talk about what Tanya is currently oh, looking at. Oh, no. Before we talk about what Kepri just saw as well. <laughs> basically, everyone except for Tariq knows what everyone has seen. This, oh, no. uh, Tariq, you're looking, has to be the guards' quarters. Okay. It's a little bit more spacious. There is, uh, there's four beds here instead of six for a similarly sized room. Uh, and there are, like, weapon racks. Uh, they you have know, since deteriorated. Normal-sized room. A normal-sized room. They have since deteriorated, and there are no weapons or any treasure left behind. Again, the guards were treated only slightly better than the servants. Capri looks over and sees Tariq looking in another room. She goes, Tariq, right now we might need you, so, uh... 
What's going on? Do you mind on? coming over here? Yeah, th- this is a little scary. Just what? stay back with stay back with us, though. <laughs> Tawny's like fur is like starting to stand up. I don't see it, anything. <laughs> Ramsey's is starting to growl. You'll see it. How far do I have to go? <laughs> Come right here. Come don't over go here. any further. Uh, yeah, on. don't go further than um Tawny. Oh, hello. And now I can reveal what the party is seeing. After the suspense has built up long enough, right? (laughs) Oh my gosh. One by one, you guys walk and then freeze in front of this tiny little shack. Yet another, uh, this one seems to be more guards quarters, except this one seems to be more like their office or like their working area. And in the shade of this shed is this massive dog. But as you guys are looking at it, it's... It has not one, but two heads. And Worth it's, this. It's curled up, its paws one over the other, its heads both nuzzled in its arms, and it's kind of just snoring. Oh my. Slowly back away. Yep, yep, let's, let's not bother that one. <laughs> but I think we have to go that way. Because that's the only other path. Oh. I, I, see, I see a path over there to get upstairs quick question Mm -hmm. do we get any sort of advantage to attacking a dog and not letting sleeping dogs lay um (laughs) would we get any kind of advantage for that because it is prone technically it is asleep it is prone um i am wondering yes if to attack it though well if we use the cantrip tangled foot (gasps) <gasps> to You're keep genius. it tangled up on the ground interesting while it's asleep so i will tell you this i like this plan <laughs> however the second you cast a hostile spell we all immediately roll for initiative okay now here's the good news it is unconscious technically it is asleep so it is taking a penalty to its initiative rolls so Tariq mentions this plan to everyone and goes what do you guys think should we go for it or just i Let's- mean Take let's, our chances and let it sleep. Like, let's pause and save. Everyone, <laughs> <So. laughs> quick save. I say we try to sneak past it and get to the stairs. Well, while uh. while we are looking at it and it's asleep, how about we do some nature checks? Yep, I was about to ask: Is there anything I can do here? I don't think this is a natural animal, given it has two heads. Correct. It is a beast, so you can roll either Arcana or nature. Ooh, Arcana! So here, finally. I just want to say. <laughs> There have been animals and humans born with one body, two heads. It has happened naturally before. There are there are scary two-headed beasts in the real world. They're called mother-in-laws. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Shit. Sorry. Says, I- she says to a group, um, to no one who has a mother-in-law right now. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know how, but Tawny, Tariq, and Kareth. You guys have either heard stories, rumors, maybe read about them in like a bestiary if you're reading them in a library, just curious, like what kind of monsters are out there? What what are adventurers fighting? This black furred, two-headed dog is as large as a horse and has midnight black eyes. Tiny worms crawl on its mangy hide. These things... Gross. Are disease ridden? Oh no. no, 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 no. Nocturnal pack hunters, which is why it's asleep right now, because it is the daytime. You said pack hunters. Said to be sometimes. Sometimes they go off in solitary uh, groups. What did you say they were called again? They are called death dogs. They are a type of goblinoid magical beast. Uh, they're kind of in the same family as uh, wargs or like any of those big things. Uh, but if they you are look said at them the right way. They are kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> well, say that once you wake them up. Uh-huh. But they're said nope. to have risen from the corpses of dogs or hyenas, animated by monster worshiping cultists, such as those huh. of Lamashtu. Um, I definitely say well, we do not God. wake this doggy up. Okay. Um, okay. I'm um, sick enough like as it is. Pass. I don't need another disease. Right. Oh, That's wait, what I'm on. thinking I just, too. I just read this line. It's kind of amazing. A death dog's saliva contains hundreds of tiny eggs that grow into flesh devouring no, no, worms. No, 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 no. Nope. It's nope. got no. Nope. Listen, 
I think we ought to just go back into the house. Um, I mean, there's no, like... But we've already gone all of those ways. No, no we didn't. <laughs> we just came outside. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, because we need to go to the south <laughs> We literally, that. we didn't even go to the southern end, uh, south southeastern end of the house. We just came out here. So we don't necessarily have to dangerously cross in front of this mangy, disgusting beast. <laughs> and maybe <laughs> we get lucky and find a secret passage or something. So I agree. Let's let's start going back. I'm not waking this up. Let's get out of here, y'all. Oh, wait. Tariq, Tariq probably doesn't say y'all. Dang it. <laughs> let's get out of here, <laughs> Hey, everyone. sometimes sometimes it slips through. <laughs> let's get out of here, everyone. For the record, I want all of you guys to know I did roll a uh, perception check against all of your stealth DCs just to make sure it doesn't wake up. And uh, it didn't roll well. <laughs> It didn't. Good. Did it? I'm happy it didn't roll well. Well, I mean, it was asleep, so surely it had penalties to it. Kareth, nothing's here. Shut the you door. Walk, in no! my face. <laughs> you walk Kareth. into the privy. Sorry. This, this is. Uh, I'm gonna describe two rooms here. First of all, oh no. Uh, the rest of the party, as they they journeyed north and then west uh, into the house again through th through some of the main doors, uh, through the kitchen and the, the the hallway here. Then they walked into this uh, small little room that can only be described as a chapel. And then Kareth went south into the bathroom, and just being curious, because he is highly intelligent and likes to learn things, he opened one bathroom stall, it's no, just a toilet, and then he closed no, it. No, I didn't. And then he opened the second bathroom stall. Oh, Kareth. As he opened the door, a corpse oh, God, falls Kareth. forward on top of him, and I will see you guys next week. No, oh, Kareth, no. my friend. Close the door, close the door! <laughs> you can't close the door now! We both yes, certainly can. can! You can do that very fast. You can open it, oh, and you can go, oh no, and shut it. <laughs> <laughs>